Good morning. It's uh, another <laughs> slightly misty morning here in Porte, Porto Eora. I'm standing right outside of our North Seymour Hostel Hotel, and we are about to get picked up uh, and taken to the other side of the island where we'll get on a boat and go to an island called uh, Barolome. And it's going to be a full day adventure. We're going to be out hiking uh, on land. We're going to be snorkeling. Uh, who knows what we're going to see? So it's going to be a fun day. After a bus ride across Santa Cruz, we took a short launch out to our boat. Shortly after, we were cruising out among the islands. The crew prepared a nice hot breakfast to start off the day. Then it was time to hang out on the deck and watch for wildlife. The first island we passed by was Daphne Major. Once we left Daphne Major, it was time to cross the open water. Our destination was Isla Bartolome, which is a small island off the coast of Isla Santiago. After about two hours, we arrived at our destination. Unfortunately, so did the clouds. We have landed on our first uninhabited island of the Galapagos. <laughs> <laughs> Bartolome Island was named after Sir Bartholomew James Sullivan, a friend of Charles Darwin who served as the principal surveyor and second lieutenant aboard the HMS Beagle. So, so far we've been on islands that really haven't shown <laughs> how young they really are because of all the plant growth, San Cristobal and even Santa Cruz, but here you can definitely see the volcanic nature of the Galapagos Islands um, quite extensively. This small volcanic island is only about 1.2 square kilometers and it takes about a half hour to walk up to the top. Along the way I can see lots of volcanic features. The volcanic rocks in the Galapagos are mostly made up of basalt. You can find two types of lava flows here. Pahoy hoy is formed from high temperature, high speed flows and results in a smooth, twisted rope-like texture. Aa, -ah, on the other hand, is a cooler flow resulting in a rough, jagged surface. Barolome contains a number of parasitic cones that form off the vents and fissures around the sides of the main volcano. You can see two types of parasitic cones on Barolome Island. On the interior of the island, you can find examples of spatter cones. These occur when lava flows out the vent, releasing dissolved gases. This causes gobbets of lava to, to be tossed up into the air, where they cool and fall back down into splats and form a small cone. Even in this barren landscape, life finds a way. One of the few plant species that can tolerate the arid, ash-covered volcanic slopes is Tequila nesiotica, or the gray mat plant. You can find these little plants spread almost equally apart from each other. This is an adaptation to reduce competition for water. The roots spread horizontally beneath the surface to maximize the uptake of any available moisture. Also, tiny light-colored hairs cover the stems and leaves, giving the plant a gray color. These are adaptations to reduce the heat exposure and retain moisture. The gray mat plant plays an important ecological role as its roots stabilize the loose ashy soil 
its flowers provide food for lava lizards, and its pollen is a nectar source for insects. This species is endemic to the Galapagos and is listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. One of the most recognizable features in the Galapagos is Pinnacle Rock, which you can see from this view. It was also featured in the 2003 Russell Crowe film Master and Commander. Pinnacle Rock is an example of the second type of parasitic cone called a tuft cone. Tuft cones are generally found along shorelines and are formed when water enters the vent and contacts magma, causing it to explode outward and results in a cone composed of cemented volcanic ash. One of the sightings we were hoping for on this trip were the Galapagos penguins, and as we were leaving the island, we finally got our shot. The Galapagos penguins are the second smallest in the world, and a small colony about 30 and 40 can be found around the base of Pinnacle Rock. We did catch a glimpse of this endangered species, but only my long lens camera got a shot. Once we got back on the boat, it was time to grab our snorkel gear and head out into the water.
After all that hiking and snorkeling, it was time for a late lunch of fish and rice. As we began our journey back to Santa Cruz, we picked up a little bit of an escort. This day was definitely a highlight of our trip. And if you want to know more about traveling to the Galapagos, check out the description of the video below for all our logistics and costs. And of course, until next time, keep exploring.